lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. There's a lot of rain today. Yeah, I thought I was going to take a boat over here, man. Was it that bad? <laughs> well, it, not when I was driving over, but okay. it was rain, It was when it rained. Yeah. I um, Of course, I... Uh, I parked in the back of the building at my office this morning, and that's farther away from the building. And there's yeah. no awning in the back. Oh, man. So <laughs> um, then, it, you know, it rained all day. So every time I went back and forth uh, to the car, which was only twice, but um, it, it wasn't fun. Yeah. And so when I went, came back from lunch, I parked in the front of the building. Yeah. It was still raining. Yeah. And Almost as soon as that happened, it stopped raining, which is bad because the reason I park in the back is because there's shade. Oh, yeah. Parked in the front because it was raining, and so the shade, shade didn't, didn't matter. matter. Yeah. But then the sun was out the rest of the day, so when I got back in my car after work. Like a sauna? Yeah, I was being broiled on my way home. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, not for long. I got a fairly good air conditioner because you have to here. Oh, yeah, that's important. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, so like... So it rained a ton today, mm -hmm. but there's like a massive fire in Robertsdale right now. Yeah. Which is just weird to me when I got the call earlier that, you know, ah, there, just so you know, there's a big fire and they're shutting down all the roads around it and blah, blah, blah. It's like, how is there a fire? <laughs> like, <laughs> like a chemical fire or something? No, it's a house fire, but it's an abandoned house. Mm. So yeah, some abandoned house is on fire. Um, apparently there was reports of kids shooting fireworks. I mean, maybe they were shooting them inside the house. Like, I, oh. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I can come up with. There's no way like a firework landed on the roof of this house and burned it down with all the rain we had today. Maybe it was a Richard Pryor type situation. Some, oh, some yeah. crackhead lit his hair on fire. and <laughs> Maybe. <you know. laughs> Although, in Robertsdale, probably meth head. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you got the wrong drug. But, yeah. but same theme, though. Yeah. <laughs> right theme, wrong drug. <laughs> Interesting. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, well, you, know, you have an intimidating amount of notes again. Well, it's because I have some quotes and like our, I mean, it's probably going to be our last story is almost all of this. Yeah. And yeah, quotes, you know, I don't know. Quotes take, take up, space. up space. Yeah. I can't, I can't shorthand quotes. Oh uh, yeah. Cause they're quotes. Cause they're quotes. <laughs> Cause you want to get it right. Right. Yeah. I don't want to misquote. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So. Um, no, I mean, like a lot of it is, some of it's just, uh, info that I wanted to make sure that I got right. And some of it is, is things that I just wanted to make sure that I said. Yeah. And then there's like whole sections that are <laughs> quotes. Well, fair enough. But the, um. But we got plenty to talk about, so. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be good. We'll, we'll have to put off the, uh, Ray Epps thing for some other time. We'll have to. I actually want to watch the interview, so like I have. Oh yeah, I do too. I haven't I, had the chance either. Yeah, I haven't got to watch it, so I don't want to talk about it till I hear what's said. But, um, but just so people the, know, that's that's out there. Like he's done an interview of sixty minutes, and yeah. it's probably worth watching. I would think. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it may not be. I, it's at least gonna be propaganda. Well, I'm sure it is, but I'm interested. I'm just interested to hear how they frame everything. I, I am too. Like, I mean, so I, like, I may not even watch the whole thing myself. I may get the Cliff Notes version, but. It's but just hard to imagine that, like, the, they're going into people's cell phone records to see if they were present to try and, you know, track people down and arrest them. This guy's on camera multiple times telling people to go to the Capitol, go assault the Capitol. We got to break into the Capitol yeah. and was never arrested. Some, there's something weird about <laughs> something that. Something ain't right. Like, the, I'm just saying, like. Like, well, you know, we can't pin anything on him no no you have him on tape like, and I, well and that's the so i know we don't want to go too deep into yeah. it but i do want to just say like to me at least it seems like that may be like the smoking gun to the january 6th thing the fact that this guy is on tape like just trying to get people to go in and whether or not that guy's a fed or not i think is a smoking gun Mm. I mean, because if he is a Fed, then there's a strong argument to be made that this was an inside job. Like, yeah. Or if he's just some kind of informant, like some, you know, Fed adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird situation. Right. So we, we can do a little, like I say, we'll watch the interview and, or, and 
do a show on that later. Because yeah. I think I think there's some stuff that's worth digging into there. Yeah. And I know you want to talk about the trans stuff, but that's gonna have to get pushed aside for yeah. now too. And that one just just so kind of people like it's there's so much propaganda going on with that right now. And that's mm-hmm. the reason I, I feel like we need to talk about it. It's just yeah. the peop the the story that's being told here is not right. Yeah, and while we're arguing about whether girls are girls or not um, yeah. or girls can be boys or boys can have babies or what, like, I don't yeah. know, whatever kind of weird thing or whether it's perfectly fair for, um, people with the XY chromosome that declare themselves women to compete against uh, actual women. And man, that sounded terrible. didn't it? <laughs> oh, well people with XX chromosomes <laughs> yeah. in women's sports, even in high school, like the, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. a pretty, it is a weird situation, but, um, while we're arguing about that, we're also sending a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine so that people continue to die there. And, yeah. um, you know, part of that, those leaks from last week, I don't know that, I don't know that I mentioned it on a podcast cause I just can't remember. There were so many things, um, was the a declaration in there essentially that there will be no negotiations through 2023. Yeah. Um, even yeah. though clearly Zelensky wants to negotiate at this point. Yeah. And needs to. Oh yeah. Well, he I mean he's needed to for a long time, but yeah. I think maybe he's realizing that he needs to. Yeah, the I and to, you know, put in perspective that this thing could have been done a year ago. It, it was in yeah. April of 2022 when they had more or less come to an agreement in Turkey. Yeah. Um and uh Naftali Bennett, the former um Israeli prime minister, said that the US just submarined it. Yeah. And so the the last year of death and destruction in Ukraine can be blamed on the U.S. and U.K. partially. Yeah. So it could have I been mean, done. Large part, I would say. Well, I mean, I would I mean, say I, that I, we, Russia's still responsible for blowing stuff up. And the Ukrainian government no, I agree, isn't but, guiltless here either. No. I, I mean, it, it, Zelensky did make the decision to go with that. Of course, yeah. I'm sure that there were promises about how much support he would get that he may or may not have gotten, actually received. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, the uh, the interesting thing about the media this week was how much of it was focused on the media. Yeah, right. I uh, all the big stories. Um, Tucker. Yeah. Tucker parting and Doc- ways with Fox. I'm trying to, you know, like. They There's seem, some, still some questions. Everybody's yeah. being a little squirrely about what what yeah. the deal is. <laughs> so my understanding, though, is that Tucker is they didn't actually cancel his contract. They just mm-hmm. ended his show, so he's going to get paid through the rest of his contract. Yeah, I, presumably, or they're going to buy it out or something. Yeah. Um. I mean, I well, guess they're, they're my, saying that they're you know they'll negotiate out of it or. Is Whatever. that what they're saying? I mean, I, okay. I don't know. That's kind of the impression I got from yeah. some of the news that I heard. But yeah, I heard the same thing. They didn't fire him. Yeah. They've maintained his contract. They just yeah. took away all took his, his airtime. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the kicker to that, though, is he can't do any, he can't go to another station or do anything. Well, host, he's still under contract. Host another show while he's under contract. Yeah. So. Or not for anybody else. I mean, he can host another show at Fox. Well, yeah, if they give it to him. <laughs> yeah, I, which it seems clear that they're not. No. Um, uh, far more importantly, uh, Don Lemon has been fired. <laughs> um, it seems that Don Lemon has been fired, though. Yeah, uh, he. Yeah, yeah. It, that that one felt different than the Tucker <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I um, <laughs> he won't be missed in the same way. No, I, not as many people watching him. No, um, no, no presidential run coming from him. You don't think? I I would. Be kind of surprised. Oh, actually, I don't know how surprised I would really be. Well, <laughs> if, he, I mean, if he tried to run. Well, I'll um, say this though, because there's been a not a lot, but there's been some talk around Tucker possibly making a run. Yeah, and I, I don't see well, him doing that. Well, I blew it off until they until I heard about the deal with this contract, and I got to thinking. I was like, well, I mean, if if he is going to have to sit his contract out without hosting a show. Why not run for president? It's just a speaking tour anyway. It keeps his name in the media. It keeps him, you know, I don't actually yeah. think he would do it, but I mean, you're getting paid anyway. Why not? Yeah. Um, there's a real opportunity for him if he gets out of the contract because yeah. 
Oh, he can the, make the money, independent dude. media space for him. Oh, it's huge. Would like, be so could, good. He'd probably be. It'd probably be more, more lucrative. I, I think so. Although he, was, I think he was getting like twenty million a year from Fox. That's a lot of money. That's to make a lot up, of money. Yeah, uh, through podcasting. Yeah, I but mean, that's way more than we make. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, but I think that there's plenty of avenues for him to go. Just and, to clarify and, to people that are wondering now how much money we make, this thing has only cost us money. Don't. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is a, a <laughs> nobody's loss. paying us for this. this. This is what they call in the industry a loss leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but but yeah, um, there's plenty of opportunity for him out there, and honestly, mm-hmm. he may do better in um, as far as just eyeballs go. Uh, um, in the pro- away from Fox News yeah. and cable in general, mm-hmm. um, because I mean, cable news does not do that well anymore. Like people aren't watching that like they used to. Uh, then, of course, there's also the Dominion settlement. Yeah, um, and uh, the um, Nick Sandman settlement settlement as well. Oh, so he settled. I didn't know that that was. Yeah, I, mean, I must have missed that. Yeah, um, I, I don't have details on that really, but I, I don't know that there's really been details released. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's been a settlement with Nick Sandman too about, uh, you know, for libel or misrepresentation or whatever. I don't know. Wow. Um, more power than a lot of money though. I mean, as I understand it, like in the, in the tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for that. Like, I think the way they did him was wrong. Yeah, that kid, poor kid. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, so, so, uh, anyway, yeah. Interesting news about news. Um, And, uh, and they still suck. Yeah. Right. (laughs) And yeah, none, none of this is leading to a better product. I know it's, um, it's interesting because I've been reading, uh, Taibbi's book, Hate Inc. Yeah. Um, about how the media, uh, incites hatred between groups in the U S and like, it's been really interesting kind of him following the history of you know, there was a time when there were only a few stations. And so they were, com- they were, those few stations were competing for as many eyeballs as possible. So it was a very centrist message that they were putting out there. Um, kind of try to appeal to everybody. Yeah. Um, or and, have something for everybody. Mm-hmm. And then as the media landscape became more saturated and of course with the, the um, start of Fox news um, yeah. that, you know, there's a, a new paradigm about, Hey, make a tribe yeah. Uh, you know, get people to come back to you for that reason. And then at the same time, there, there was a shift from, um, from getting you to watch by instilling fear to getting you to watch by making you mad. Yeah. And, uh, and it turns out that, um, that anger is nearly as effective as fear and a lot easier to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause you start to run out of uh, enemies at some point when you're trying to instill fear, you know, there was no. uh, the communist Soviet union for a long time, but then at the end of that, then in, there was terrorism. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, now like, we're the terrorist. Well, I mean, of course the, if financial collapse, there's uh, pandemic. Yeah. You know? uh, but none of those things really last very long. They certainly didn't have the staying power of the Soviet union. And yeah, uh, people start to get, um, kind of immune to it, I guess, but it's, it's real easy to make people angry. Yeah. All you, gotta, all you gotta do is play a bunch of clips of Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> or Tucker Carlson, apparently. Yeah. For the other side of Tucker Carlson. So <laughs> there you go. I've actually learned more about, um, Tucker Carlson's reporting, in this last week than I ever knew about Tucker Carlson's reporting. It's I was, funny actually, cause I, I have been accused on more than one occasion of, Oh, I get my opinions from Tucker Carlson who I have never watched. The only time <laughs> I've watched him is when he's had a viral video. Like yeah. I, I've, oh, watched, I've seen clips, but yeah, I've watched yeah. a bunch of our, but I've never tuned into a show. Mm-hmm. Um, I just never have. I mean, I don't watch cable news. So, I mean, there you go. I mean, there's a lot of things that I would completely disagree with Tucker about. I, my mom, um, my mom's a Tucker fan, and um, so like her her big shows are actually, I guess, the two big f- shows on Fox is Tucker yeah. and um, Greg Gutfeld. Yeah, Greg. Greg? Yeah, Greg. Greg? I think Greg? it's Greg. Okay, he used to do Red Eye, but I think he has his own show now. Okay, and I like that guy. Like he's good. Yeah, he's um, he's funny. And I watched his uh, his sit down conversation with uh, Bill Maher 
um, months ago, I guess. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. He's funny. He's a funny guy. I like <laughs> yeah. him. Um, um, always been a fan. So, and, and, you know, she tells me that those guys are libertarians. Tucker's, I mean, um, I Gutfeld, know. I think, is at least of some stripe. Yeah. A libertarian. But um, but Tucker's not. Like, Tucker doesn't, I don't think Tucker understands economics. Yeah, that's well what I tell her, too. <laughs> to, to be a libertarian. <laughs> I've, I've heard Dave Smith <laughs> rag on him enough to at least to pick that out. Yeah, He's yeah. like, I don't think his economics are very good. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that from my, actually you may agree with him more on this topic than I do, but he's, uh, he's anti-immigration. Yeah. Um, and I'm, and he, you know, he's, he talks about how economically immigration is bad for the United States. And I think that that's completely wrong. Yeah. Um, on the whole immigration benefits the United States. It's yeah. But, um, Anyway, I, like I certainly disagree with him on that, but that's not necessarily disqualifying as a libertarian. There's plenty of libertarians that believe in enforcing the border and so forth. So. Yeah. yeah, that's not the first battle we need to fight as libertarians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I mean, that's that's my take on it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's you're absolutely right about that. Um, so. Actually, to, to go off on the libertarian thing for a minute, so there's been a couple of uh, presidential candidate, I don't know, forum type things that they've done that Larry Sharp has hosted. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I've watched them. Um, it seems to me, so we got anybody good out there. There's a guy, something Rodriguez. He's out as far as I'm concerned. I don't think he presents himself very well. He, he doesn't have as deep an understanding of a lot of the policy issues as I would like. Um, Lars Mapstead, Marstead, Mapstead, something like that. Okay. Um, he's Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think your two leading candidates of the four guys that they've had on um, so far are uh, Chase Oliver and Mike Termot. Okay. Um, I actually like both of them for different reasons. Uh, Chase Oliver came around locally a while back. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to meet him. I didn't get to go to the event. But uh, uh, but he I, was. But <laughs> hey, hats off for the guy that come in the lower Alabama. All right. Yeah. Um. He came to our uh, our state convention in 2022. Also. Did he? Um. Actually. So he's maybe the I've guy, met this guy then. You might have. I know that I sat down um, at the table with him and argued with him about the Ukraine war for uh, for half an hour, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Um. Because he was, you know. I, and actually, I say argued with him. I talked about it on this podcast afterwards, but uh, argue may be unfair. It's not that our positions were that far apart. It's just that, you know, he's given a speech and he and it was very one sided. And I, I was talking to him about I, like, I think like if you want to if you want to represent the libertarians out there, I really feel like you should present the nuance in this, that yeah. it's not just an aggressive Russian war that there, you know, there were things that happened before the invasion <laughs> that contributed to this and it was our foreign policy that was a part of it. I, yeah. I think you need to not leave that out. That's the important part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we can Especially all, Especially to libertarians. Yeah. With other well, even not libertarians. Like how do you yeah. separate, like how do you explain the, everybody can condemn the Russian government for the invasion. Yeah. That's fair. Totally fair. I'm on board with it, condemning the Russian government for the invasion. Yeah. But when you're talking about, politics in this country that's not valuable yeah like we can all agree on that that's not necessary the important thing yeah. if you're talking about making change in this country because he was running for senate at the time in georgia oh yeah okay um, yeah i do remember him okay yeah so uh, um i think that it's important that you point out that it's the u.s foreign policy that brought us to this yeah that or certainly yeah. contributed heavily. it had a it had a yeah. major impact um, yeah and, and so, that's something at least we as Americans should have some control over. Yeah. And it's it, as a, a libertarian with a voice on the national level, it's important that you let people know because they're not being told anywhere else. Yeah. That's a message that ain't getting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how we can be better than the two parties that are there. Yeah. Because if, if it had been, you know, it, a, a Ron Paul foreign policy up until this, after the fall of the Soviet Union, we wouldn't be there. <laughs> well, I don't think. And and that's that's an important message to give libertarian candidates. I think in general is to not shy away from the 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 different message mm -hmm. uh, because I think me and you talked about it the other day about Tucker. Um, um, <laughs> me and you talked about it the other day as far as Tucker goes. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not so much Tucker that everybody likes and follows. 
it's the message. Yeah. It's that he's saying stuff that nobody else will say. And the truth is, is anybody could get up there and start throwing that message around and pull mm-hmm. a following like he has. Yeah, it's it's uh, um, I think it's a genuineness that. It's I, I think it's it's the idea that even if you disagree with him, you don't feel like he's being controlled. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's telling you what he believes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. I, yeah, I think that that's that's the important part of Tucker on, um, in news. Yeah. Uh, there are plenty of things that I disagree with him about. Um, but he is uh pretty anti-war. I did see a clip from a podcast that he did recently where he was talking about the media's role in the control structure. Yeah. Which was interesting in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but he was, he was talking about, uh, you know, that he'd been a part of it, that, that, you know, there was a point where there was this realization Yeah. that his business is part of the authority structure in this country Yeah. and that he'd been a part of it and that his greatest regret was, uh, um, cheerleading the Iraq war. Yeah. You're like that. Well, this is the thing that I've done. That's the worst thing that I've done. Yeah. Well, he's definitely atoned for that. <laughs> yeah, I think in a lot By of ways being he better, has. Better, you know mm-hmm. now. You yeah. Know. Um. And and that's actually I think a a lot of the reason that he's out is that he um he was the only voice I think in mainstream media uh criticizing our involvement in Ukraine. He's the only big one. I mean, he's definitely the only one I know of. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not saying there's not some guy on some other show that's not nearly as popular, but I don't know who it is. Yeah. So I may sit there and argue with Tucker about immigration and uh, economic stuff, but um, he's been good on some really important things. Yeah. Uh, foreign policy being one of them. I think that he was good on the lockdown stuff, although I'm not 100% yeah, on that. Yeah, it seemed but, like he was pretty good with COVID, but I don't, mm-hmm. I don't remember. And... Um, and he's a he's a national voice that um, that is saying a lot of things that is are censored elsewhere. Yeah, whether you agree with him or not, and and as I understand it, uh, I've heard from um, both Megyn Kelly and Glenn Greenwald at this point. So I, I it's come from both sides, and I yeah. I trust that they keep up with these numbers. Is that more young Democrats are listening to Tucker than any show on CNN or MSNBC? That's interesting. Yeah. There's something to that. Yeah, and it, I've, it comes back to that same thing. I think, you know, even... I, I, they can't all be hate watches, right? Like, there's yeah. not... I mean, yeah, there's not there's that not many people that, that many. are willing to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it comes back to that idea that, well, whether I agree with him or not, he's he's not being controlled. Yeah, yeah. He's not a part of this authoritarian narrative structure. He's doing his own thing. Yeah. And of course, they made him that way in a lot of ways by driving away all his advertisers. Yeah, he, they just un, unleashed him. <laughs> so. um, he also had that bit recently, though, where he was talking about um, pharma controlling the media. Yeah, uh, saw that clip too. That was interesting. That'll get you fired real quick because even oh, yeah. if they're not sponsoring his show, they are advertised <laughs> all over Fox. I was gonna say, yeah. Um, something else that's just one more thing with Tucker that, I, like, I don't know how this works or what happens here but they turned all of the january 6 tapes over to his show mm-hmm. so is that still his to do what he wishes with or i those... don't i wondered that too uh, of course because they shut that down pretty quickly well he only, yeah that he only showed he did like two episodes one set of, well but i think the second one was the same was set a of lot clips, of, was right? a lot of the same stuff was my mm-hmm. understanding yeah that's what i was told too i don't yeah, I don't watch the show, so I don't know. But it was somebody put the kibosh on that. Yeah, it was definitely. Well, we talked about it on the show mm-hmm. that the threats that were being levied from people in Congress at yeah. him. So yeah, Schumer saying uh, the that the um, uh, uh, Lachlan and oh gosh, what's Rupert Murdoch? Uh, yeah, they, they, you know that you guys yeah. uh, need to essentially you need to rein him in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so. making it clear that they had control here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and uh, and cl- apparently they did because my from what I understand that and, was about it. Yeah, like, that was the end of it. Um, and I I just find it incredibly hard to believe there wasn't more he would have liked to have shown. Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to find out, and I guess we'll see in time if he still has that, and if he will once he does start doing media again. Yeah. Um, 
use any of that. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see too. I don't know if it belongs to him or belongs to the network. Yeah. I, or I belongs know. to the show, which belongs to the network. That and that's yeah. probably how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not though. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, not completely unreta- unrelated, but shifting gears here a little bit, because you know, twenty minutes talking about <laughs> the media. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the I'm, media talking about the media. I guess we're gonna go into more media talking about the media, right? Well, we're gonna. We're going to we're going to be the media talking about the media a little bit more, I think, here. Uh, So I just found this really interesting with all these shootings going on. Like I probably need to talk about the gun stuff some. Oh, yeah. Um, But all right. So we've had these uh, these couple of events where people, uh, you know, getting in the wrong car got shot, which is a little weird, actually. I mean, I I I can kind of understand that one. There was a story. I don't know, it was maybe two years ago. I don't, it may not have been that long ago um, where uh, a couple of teenage girls um, carjacked uh, this woman and, and ran her over, like killed her no. um, as they were trying to get away uh, with her car and, and so forth. So it's not completely unreasonable, especially if you watch a lot of news yes. to think that maybe this was a threat. Um, there was the, the guy that got shot on the other guy's porch, um, ringing a doorbell, you know, at 10 o'clock at night at the wrong house. Uh, that seems to have been misrepresented a little bit there. And actually going into that particular one a little bit more, the, the guy, um, the old man who shot the kid says that the, he shot him when he, when he reached for the handle to the storm door. Hmm. Yeah. And like at that point, it seems, it, honestly, it seems fair. Yeah. Like you've already established that like this place that you think you are, that's not where you are. Yeah. You need to get off my porch. And if he reaches for the door, then. Yeah. I, I Maybe mean, I he know. has other intentions. Yeah. Um. So. It's at least reasonable to think that. Yeah. It, it should go to trial. I mean, there's a real question to be settled. Yeah. You know, by peers on whether that's a justified shooting or not but yeah um anyway i i don't you know guy when's the last time somebody rang his door at 10 o'clock at night i mean there's reason for him to be scared yeah uh to some degree although he's supposedly an old marine um now one of the things that really set me off about this (laughs) is that one of his grandkids uh went on cnn and was bad mouthing him about how he was such a racist and like you know, and they, when asked about his racism, he's like, well, you know, he's a 68 year old white guy. It just kind of goes with the territory is kind of the, <laughs> was the attitude. Yeah. yeah. And, um, as I understand it, that kids, I mean, he's not a kid anymore, but I mean, like, you know, this grandson is, is a grown up as an adult. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of things to be aware of, um, is that first off, he's a, he's an activist. He's a, progressive activist yeah um and secondly his brother said that was all bs that their granddad is not a racist and yeah. you know he's a military man served with black men he's like not a racist yeah so the thing that really sets me off about that is it it's evidence of the government succeeding in some things that i think authoritarian regimes work on which is like breaking down the family breaking down religion yeah. Because those are things that draw loyalty away from the government. Yeah. Now, the the fact that this guy, this the grandson, that it's more important to him to earn political brownie points with his tribe than yeah. to protect his family. Yeah. Is that, really frightening to me. Yeah. That's uh, it says something about the time we live in. Yeah. Um because I mean that's I mean it, I can it, it doesn't surprise me nowadays, mm-hmm. but I couldn't see something like that happening 50 years ago. Yeah. Now, granted, uh, I went around, be so I don't know. I, yeah. I, um, I mean, I think of family as the, you know, people that you can call to help you bury bodies. Yeah. I mean, that's not the only thing they're good for, but <laughs> yeah, I but, mean, like, I would, but that's hope, how deep it runs. Yeah. I would hope that, yeah. that my family would be willing to protect me in almost any situation. Yeah, absolutely. And cause I certainly would be. Yeah, Absolutely. And uh, I, I, it's just, it's just crazy to me that he would throw his grandfather under the bus. Well, this is a big opportunity for, for him. Yeah. Now he can get on TV and talk about his 
Yeah, and show you everybody know? how uh, how virtuous he is. Exactly. Incredible. Exactly. Um. So, but anyway, in in all of that, I think and there was a bunch of stories. There was a couple of more. Yeah. I don't remember specific one. Oh, where, there was a little girl that got. Sh- uh, that shot got by shot. yeah because um, her ball rolled into yeah, somebody's basketball yard. rolled into the yard or well, something. well and there was yeah. another one where i guess some people pulled into the wrong driveway and mm-hmm. ended up being shot like the we have been littered with these stories like all, those all of those stories we just rattled off were in the media this week yeah um some it just it puts my spidey senses up like something's up yeah well, yeah, and I agree. Um, I, I think it's you know it's another one of these pushes for gun control. But uh, to me, the answer to this problem isn't gun control. It's actually like not gun. The opposite. The opposite. Of gun control. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a, a big part of the problem, I think, again, is the media it is. Uh, instilling fear in people, making people believe that this is a really dangerous world that we're living in. That things are. Da- so dangerous that anything is a threat and yeah. that the threat is from within. That's part of that, like it, oh, instilling yeah. the hatred, the anger between the groups um, is that the other guy is a, is against you yeah. and after you. And, um, th- and the truth is that on the whole, this is the safest this country's ever been. <laughs> yeah. If you go by the numbers. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, in terms of violent crime statistics, now you, you can probably isolate um, well, there, there's been a little uptick in the last couple of years from as, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from poverty. Well, yeah, I was good. I, well, and as I said, COVID, I, what I really kind of meant was economic downturn. Yeah. Like as a result of them, shutting as down a result of us shutting down the gut, the, the entire, not the government, but the um, yeah. society, a lot of businesses, um, driving prices up, you know, people not being able to earn the kind of incomes that they could before. Yeah. So there's been a little uptick, but on the whole, uh, violent crime has been going down, 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 down. There's been a real pretty constant trend down in violent crime in this country. Yeah. And so the truth is that the this is a safer place than it's ever been. But and, you wouldn't know it watching the TV. But yeah, if you're if you're watching mainstream news, that's not the story that you're getting. Well, and I, I think that this is I think Part of what's happening here is is they're using the COVID um, playbook mm-hmm. because that's what this is what they did with COVID is they just inundated you day in day out with all of these stories and all of this hype and fear and and it worked like I mean they we shut we shut society down we did all of these things um, and so I, I think that that's kind of the playbook that's being used here. Yeah, people that absorbed a whole lot of news thought that half of the time if you got COVID, you would die. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Incredible. Well, and so here's the other side of it is the story on gun control is that we want to protect you. We want to prevent deaths from firearms. We want to um, make you safer uh, by controlling the guns. Like the average citizen needs to not worry about being shot and so forth. Yeah, and, and that is literally like the the same words they use. Like that, I mean, that is the story here. All right. Well, I've got a counterpoint. All right. Okay. So uh, Alec Baldwin, who actually shot somebody, yes, dead. Yeah, shot and killed somebody. Um, his charges were dropped. Mm-hmm. So um, he is not going to be prosecuted for killing uh, this woman. Yeah. Um, the armorer. Uh, at the on the rust set hannah gutierrez her charges were not dropped so she could still uh be she's still being prosecuted for the death of this woman um because she was responsible for the firearms and if convicted she faces a maximum of 18 months of prison wow 18 months wow for being responsible for the shooting death of somebody i mean that is that is nothing yeah, well, there's more. <laughs> Wait, there's more. <laughs> so um, there are two guys uh, that um, have been accused of producing illegal machine gun parts. Now, what they were actually doing is that they are, I'm sorry, it's illegal machine gun conversion devices, I think is yeah. the exact term. But um, what they were actually doing is that they were um, selling uh, metal pieces that were inscribed 
with a, a shape which, if cut out by the purchaser and then installed into a semi-automatic rifle, could make it automatic. Yeah. All right. So essentially, they're providing instructions. Yeah. I mean, like, which, they weren't even really providing the parts. They, yeah. Like, yeah. they're providing was, instructions. Yeah. Now, um, those two guys face sentences of the lesser of the two, who was, I think, just marketing them, not actually producing them. Yeah. See, he's doing that right now because he knows I won't yell into the microphone. Yeah. And he knows better. Yeah. You got some bad cats. I know. They're 12, though. I can't change them now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the yeah, uh, the guy who was just marketing him, not actually producing him, is facing forty five years in pr- prison. And the guy who's producing these metal pieces, yeah, with the um, engraving, yeah, um, is facing a hundred and ten years. Yeah, so prison sentences. <laughs> it's. It's absolutely insane. And as being a gun guy, like as soon as you started listing off what they're doing, I was like, oh, you're not allowed to do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I know where the lines are at. Well, like, you remember they had the guy um, years ago that put the instructions online on how to 3D print uh-huh. uh, gun parts. Not and, allowed to do that either. Yeah, and they chased him all over the world. And yeah. um, he was also accused as, uh, as frequently as the case when you're really trying to turned somebody into a bad man. He was accused of, uh, of kitty porn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of possessing um, yeah. child pornography or whatever. Yeah. Now, maybe he actually was. Yeah. But you don't know. But yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't, I don't trust my to- government to tell me that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, wouldn't be, sur- I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was planted to, pr- to make him into an evil man that nobody's going to defend. Exactly. Um, We'll see about these guys. May if it yeah. comes up with these guys too, then you, then you know. we know there's a pattern. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, kitty porn dealers uh, also deal in firearms. Maybe <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, but huh. if the government's really concerned about you know people dying um, from firearms, then why is it that uh, that oh, okay? I would just say that these sentences would suggest that they're less concerned with people getting shot. Yeah. And more concerned with people possessing firearms. Yeah. And it's because they're not worried about your safety, they're worried about theirs. Exactly. And that's the whole point, is that this is all a push to to bring the guns in. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and you, the way you laid that out is, is absolutely correct. Like, they're not worried about the actual individuals. They're worried about how many guns are out there and what can we do about it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what this is about. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's, well, which is, it's, it's still insane that. because with the amount of guns that are, and this is where, whether you, you're for gun control or not, like you can't dispute the fact that there are, is a just insane amount of guns in this country and, and a culture in this country that is not going to allow anybody to come take these guns. Yeah. So the reality is, regardless of what you believe, that if if we decide that we're taking the guns, it's going to be a civil war. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a fight. It's going to there's it's not going to happen peacefully. You know, the, so the you, interesting that, thing is like, what are you going to do if you decide to do this and people are resistant to it? Are you going to bring in the U.S. Army? You to, have to. to take the, now. Remember that probably the the part of the country that's going to be the most resistant is this part of the country. Absolutely, it is. And then you got to remember that actually uh, a majority of the people that volunteer for the U.S. Army are poor Southerners. Yeah. <laughs> Do you so, think that they're going to <laughs> to follow those orders? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a weird situation. So yeah, like it or not, firearms are a part of American culture and will be for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And actually, if you want to be safe, the best thing to do is have your own firearm. Yeah. Yeah. I well, and learn how to operate it well, yeah. and train with it. But I, yeah. I thought that that went without say, but maybe well, you're right. But it needs to be ma- mentioned because a lot of people think, oh, because especially particularly anti-gun people because yeah. there's a fear of guns. That's true. Um and oh, but they're so much fun. Well, they are. I mean, I mean, yeah, exactly. But but to pe- people who aren't like me and you, um, I mean, there that's that's where this this 
yearn to felt this incredible sense of power like god must feel when he's holding a when gun. he's holding a gun <laughs> yes <laughs> um but yeah to people who aren't gun people i mean they're scared of them um and that's a big reason that a lot of people think that we shouldn't have them is mm-hmm. because they're scared of them yeah. so but go out and train with one even even if you think that People shouldn't have guns. Mm-hmm. I, what I would, or if because we may have some people like that listening to this podcast that's sitting there right now. I can't believe they're talking about guns. Blah 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 blah. Like we need to take the guns, and that's the only way to fix this. Yeah. Um. And so it, to those people, I would say, just do this. Just go go do a training day. With, go go to your local um, what you call it, shooting range. Yeah. Like they've got people there that will yeah. work with you. Just do it for a day. And like I say, if you, st- you, you may still walk away believing what you believe, but I guarantee you will feel a lot more comfortable around guns after doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, is I've always said that owning a gun is like owning a pool. Yeah. Like pools are really dangerous if you don't know how to swim. Oh, absolutely. Um, and it, and it's worth being fearful of a pool if you don't know how to swim. Guns are the same way. Yeah. Like, it's it's all in how you use it. You got to understand it. You got to be safe with it. Yeah. And then it's a tool. Exactly. And a very entertaining one at that. I think so. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's hit, hit our last topic because we're, yeah, we've talked a lot. We're running long. Yeah. As we keep doing <laughs> recently. <laughs> Man, this whiskey's good. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is a story that I don't think is getting enough coverage, um, and it is uh, that four U.S. citizens and three Russians um, were indicted for a foreign malign influence campaign. Um, and uh, I mean, there's more than that to it. They are also accused of uh, acting as unregistered agents. The Americans are accused of acting as unregistered agents for a foreign government. And um, the Russians are also charged with funding and directing candidates for local office in St. Petersburg, Florida, with designs on the presidency. I mean, that's how the <laughs> the actual indictment reads, which sounds so absurd. Like they're supporting yeah. local St. Petersburg um, candidates, and but they were talking about the presidential campaign. Yeah. Like that's a big leap. I'm right. I was <laughs> just saying, just, like, I don't know. It's not the same thing. Um, yeah. And you know, it's hard to say how much of it is true. But uh, to give some background, um, one of the Russians who is indicted is this guy Alexander Yanov. Uh, he's the founder and president of Anti Globalization Movement of Russia, which is um, a, uh, a international NGO. Um, non-government organization for those not in the, not in the biz. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, acts in opposition to, uh, trans transnational corporations, um, supranational trade and finance institutions think WTO, IMF, um, and, uh, SWIFT system, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and is generally opposed to the existing unipolar world order. Ah. Uh-huh. All right. Um, they do receive some funding for the government now from the Russian government. Now think of it like the national endowment for democracy, which receives most of its money from the American government and goes around the world, destabilizing um, social systems and government systems in other countries. Yeah. This is not quite the same thing. Like they're certainly yeah. not as effective. They, even if they're trying to do the same thing, they're definitely not <laughs> they're as not, effective. It's as not the working. NED. Right. Um, but uh, then they they are the the Russian group yeah. that is the part of this, and the two other Russians are supposedly FSB agents. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Um. I. It didn't. The, the indictment is, did not present any evidence of that. I'll. I will say. Yeah. Okay. Um. So then the, the question um, is: Does it matter? We'll get to the question. <laughs> that, right. that is the question. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I'm just trying to provide background right now. All right. Um, because I imagine most people don't even know about this story. No, this story has not been in the mainstream, at least that I've seen. Yeah. So um, the four Americans that were indicted are all members of the African People Socialist Party. This is another international organization. It was started in the U.S. Um, I tried to join, but they wouldn't let me. No. 
No. Oh, well, um, <laughs> they advocate freeing of African people worldwide. Uh, they advocate for reparations here in this country. Um, they are advocates for uh, for African sovereignty, essentially like, you know, get the colonizing powers out, let African nations decide their own fates, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, some of these things I'm on board with, some of them I'm really say, not. Yeah. I actually found one I agreed with. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Um, and they have historically uh, been in opposition to U.S. Militism, militarism. Okay. Um, and, and the important point in this case is specifically they showed support for Russia in the Ukraine war and um, have been uh, critical of U.S. involvement in Ukraine. Yeah. All right. So now they've been indicted for a... Russian malign influence campaign because of their connection to this Russian NGO, the uh, uh, the AGM, the Anti Globalization Movement. Yeah. Um, now they say their response is uh, that we are an international organization that has existed for fifty years and that we have relationships with NGOs throughout the world. Yeah. And their opposition to Ukraine uh, or to the U.S. involvement in Ukraine is not connected to the Russian NGO. Yeah. They're not on anybody's payroll. Yeah. Um, That they have been, you know, uh, critical of U.S. militarism for years. (laughs) And that this is just the newest thing. Yeah. Um, Now, uh, their founder and uh, chair, I'm going to butcher this name because I have no idea. Yeah. but I'm going to try. All right. Uh, Omali Yeshitela. Yeshitela? Right. I don't know. Anyway, um, I, I pulled this quote from him because I thought it was hilarious. All right. So speaking of the, the U.S. government and this indictment, he said, quote, I ain't ever worked for a Russian. Never, ever, ever, ever. They know I have never worked for Russia. Their problem is I've never worked for them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a great quote. Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> um, now, the assistant attorney general, uh, Olson's his last name, yeah. has uh, said, um, quote, Russia's foreign intelligence service allegedly weaponized our First Amendment rights, freedoms Russia denies its own citizens, to divide Americans and interfere in elections in the United States. End quote. Uh, now, yeah. this is why... Um, we're talking about things like the Restrict Act and uh, its details about, well, you know, there, it's uh, if, you know, one person in the U.S. government decides that, um, that you're acting on behalf of a foreign power, that you can be indicted. All right. This is why. Yeah. Because they can find any connection to any foreign power that, whose interests are in opposition to what the United States mainstream or, you know, party line is. Yeah. Um, and use that to indict Americans for speaking out against policies that they disagree with in yep. the United States. It is a way of it's, shutting down dissent. I was fixing to say it's a way to shut down your opponent. Yeah. Yeah. The person that's speaking, especially when you're sitting in the government position, mm-hmm. uh, because anybody that's, if you're sitting from the government's perch, anybody that's speaking against you is your opponent. Yeah. And so this is just a tool for them to take you down. And I, I particularly and freedom of like, speech is important. Like that's yeah. something that this country was like built on. Like that's supposed to be our thing. And, and so I'm going to rephrase what this guy uh, Olson said. Yeah. Um. And and read this back to you in how it should have been written so that people will really understand what's going on here. All right. Um. Russia's foreign intelligence service allegedly weaponized our First Amendment rights. Freedoms Russia denies its own citizens. So we've decided to do the same. Exactly. It, and that's that is that you nailed it. Yeah. Like I mean that that's it right there. <clears throat> and I mean we do this continually. I mean we did this after nine eleven with <laughs> even if because the tagline at the time after nine eleven well they hate us for our freedom. Yeah. And what did we immediately do? We passed the Patriot Act, which <laughs> did away with our freedom. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's that's where we are. That's what the government's in the business of. Um, yeah. So, and, and this actually kind of brings me back to the, uh, the libertarian, um, forum from last night. Yeah. Um, there was a question about, uh, you know, China buying up a lot of property 
and in the U S business and property yeah, and using that to, um, levy some influence on politics in the U S and would you use government to prevent that kind of thing? Yeah. And it, to their credit, all of them said no. Yeah. And, uh, but they were pressed on it. Well, China does this to us. They don't allow Americans to, you know, purchase a bunch of property and businesses and, and run businesses in China and so forth. Yeah. And they, you know, they said, well, but the answer isn't to, you know, if they're restricting freedoms of their people, the answer isn't for us to restrict freedoms in our country. Exactly. Um, the, the answer is to open things up and hope that they'll do the same. Yeah. You know, be the, be the, don't respond in kind, like be the example. Yeah. Um, now, not to their credit, none of them mentioned what the real problem is, is yeah. that the government has too much power. And so, yeah, exactly. You know, like all of this could be limited if the government didn't have as much power. It wouldn't matter if they were buying stuff all over the US, it wouldn't give them enough influence to matter. Exactly. Um, see, he's doing it again. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> sorry, everybody out there, the cat's trying to destroy my couch. Um, one of them. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is there's a, you see, there's a scratching post oh, right there. It's next right to there. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's no fun. <laughs> oh, well. It's not the same. Um, and yeah, this is the same kind of thing. Like the, the idea that, um, that the answer to, uh, problems that arise from free speech in this country that aren't presented to, uh, in other countries is to take away those rights. It doesn't make any sense. And the, the, the government should decide what's appropriate to fall under the first amendment and what isn't. Yeah. Um, you know, they're always going to interpret that to their own advantage. That's, oh. uh, that's the end every time. And I mean, I think so I, I'm sure it's been said a bunch of times, but I heard Ron Paul say it. Like mm-hmm. we don't have free speech to talk about the weather. Yeah. Like we have free speech to talk about divisive things. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you, anytime you start limiting that in any capacity, um, it's a problem. Yeah, you don't need to protect inoffensive speech. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right. non dissenting speech is, doesn't need to be protected. Yeah, um, it's it's the things that people don't want you to say that are the things that need to be protected so that you can say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, um, so. They are, I think that probably what this is really about is about their, uh, them being outspoken about the Ukraine war. Oh, there's no question. And they were able to find a way to connect them to this Russian NGO and use that um, to uh, prosecute them under the FARA uh, regulations, the Foreign Agent Registration Act stuff. Which I'm, what, what's scary about this is this kind of sets the president 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 precedent precedent (laughs) um for them to go after anybody like this Mm -hmm. i mean you could feasibly take podcasts that take donations and if they're talking about a bunch of stuff the government don't like Mm -hmm. and somebody from another country like russia or china or china or any of these places north korea iran (laughs) i mean all they need is one donation yeah and the person, the person doing the podcast, may not even realize where the donation came from. Hey, I've got a, uh, I've got a friend from college who is a Russian immigrant. Yeah, well, maybe that was, that's all it takes. Tell him not to donate to our podcast. I haven't had any contact with him in a long time. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't want to go to jail, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, and think, okay, so one of my great regrets in my life is when I was in my early twenties. Yeah. Um, this guy, and so this is like the, roughly two thousand. Yeah. Um, this guy said uh, his father still lived in, in Moscow. Yeah. His mother was here mostly, but, um, his father still lived, uh, permanently in Moscow. And he said, Hey, you know, there were a bunch of, a bunch of us friends. He -hmm. said, Hey, if you guys can, um, get flights over to Moscow, my dad will take everything, take care of everything. Once we get there, we'll be well taken care of. We'll have a place to stay. Yeah. You won't have to worry about anything once we get to Moscow if you guys can just get just a flight if in. you want. Yeah. Um, now, we were all very poor at this point <laughs> in our lives. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Getting that flight wasn't easy, right? Yeah, so wasn't none of us went. Easy. So yeah. it ended up just like falling through. None of us could go. Yeah. Um, in retrospect, man, I should have gone it, you know, too green into debt to 
make that flight. This is one of my great regrets in my life that I didn't do this because it would have been an awesome trip. I'm sure. Um, but if I had done that, yeah. What now? As we're, you know, as we're talking about this, well, you know, he did go to Russia one time, two weeks in Russia, 20 years ago. Exactly. Did they get to him? (laughs) <laughs> yeah right he's been a sleeper this whole time Whole time, yeah i don't know so, anyway like this is kind of outlandish but well it it is outlandish but at the same time like this is the direction we're heading like i mean this is yeah like, it's it's not that far-fetched yeah i, I know which is crazy I which is terrifying yeah <laughs> especially for people like us who are on the opposite end of all of us mm-hmm. um it's not a good time for dissenting voices well, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the story. Uh, look it up. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's more detail in there. There's like excerpts from conversations or text messages or emails or whatever um, that that do suggest. I mean, this is only information that was presented by the DOJ, of course. Yeah. Um, that do suggest that uh, that there was some direction from the Russian to the to the people from the African People's Socialist Party. Yeah. I imagine it was cherry-picked. Yeah. Might be translation issues. Like, there's a lot of ways to explain it. Yeah. Maybe it's for real, but I sincerely doubt it. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. It doesn't... From what I've seen of the story, it doesn't look like it checks out to me, but... Yeah. Um. So, you know, look it up for yourselves. Make your own decision. But uh, to me, it seems very clear that this is... Um, they're being... Uh, persecuted for their political positions. Yeah. And maybe not so. just the Ukraine, maybe also the reparations, the fact yeah. that they openly call themselves a socialist party, um, the, you know. Yeah. But there we are. And so uh, trying to end on something more positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Kat, you're going to have to wait. Almost done, I swear. Um, I, just in terms of the media's influence on people and kind of fomenting this anger and, and so forth. Um, just remember, all right, well, okay. How about this? Just stop defining the other side as evil. It wasn't that long ago that people yeah. thought of the other side as being, um, you know, having benevolent intentions, but being misguided. Yeah. And that for for the record, like that is the uh, approach I try to take. Mm-hmm. Um, and by and large, that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but and, and think about it this way: like the guy that you know, because I mean I know quite a few actually socialists. Mm-hmm. Like when 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 I debate with them, mm-hmm. like they're well intentioned. Yeah. They just don't understand economics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that's how you kind of have to view these things now. We've been trained through the media not to look at it that way. Yeah. Um, but just think about it as your friend that just happens to have different beliefs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So stop defining the other side as evil. Assume benevolent intentions. Absolutely. Start there. Yep. Assume benevolent intentions. Um, the left is not trying to destroy this country. Even though they are. I mean, they may be succeeding, but they're, they're not, that's not their goal. Yeah, I agree. The left is not trying to destroy this country. There may be some uh, in higher levels of power, but the guy next door, like the people well, that you interact with. Yeah, that's, I, I'm, I'm, that's my point is yeah, that. Leaving out the political elites. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Just the people that you interact with, the, the, the everyday person, the, you know, the guy that you, that has the other side, takes the other side in church or what, you yeah. know, whatever. Like the people that you know. Yeah that are on the left, they're not trying to destroy this country. And, and for you, you on the left, people on the right are not trying to kill the poor. No, <laughs> they don't not care about anybody. Yeah. And actually this idea that the, you know, conservatives are want to kill off poor people. If you think that come down here sometime, yeah. come down to the South and discover how many conservatives are poor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. It's uh, all of us, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know that I call myself conservative. I uh, I don't uh, consider myself conservative, but I definitely <laughs> consider myself poor. So. Yeah, all the people in the south—not all the people in the south—are poor. But um, 
I, I mean, yeah, that the, the truth of the matter is that, that nobody's trying to destroy anybody here. Yeah. Like people yeah. are generally good. No, I, I mean, I, I believe I that people no. are generally good and they want the best things for, for themselves, yeah. um, primarily, but for the people around them too. Yeah. And, uh, so just remember that when you're interacting with people, don't assume that the other side's trying to, to destroy your lifestyle. Yeah. Cause they're not really. Yeah. They just think that there's something better. Yeah. At least for the most part. I mean, there is, I do think that there's a concerted effort from the top to destroy our lifestyle and that type of thing, which we're yeah. probably going to end up talking about in the next well, couple I mean, of weeks. That's what but. We, we spend just about every week talking about that. But yeah. but I just mean in your everyday interactions, oh, absolutely. Don't, don't approach it this way. Yeah. No, I agree with that. People are good people. Most people are good. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of confidence in that. So. Yeah. So don't listen to the media. <laughs> yeah, so don't listen to the media. Man, sometimes I just need to unplug. Yeah. And, and my recommendation always is don't watch news. If yeah. you want to keep up with news, read it. Yeah. It, it's far less incendiary, and it's far more informative. Yeah. No, there's something to that for sure. There definitely is. So, and try and hit multiple sides. Like, usually when I when I read articles, when I get into a topic... Um, I read articles from the left and the right. Yeah. Um, and you just start to try and piece out, like suss out what are the, what's really going yeah, on. What are, what the, are facts the facts? Of the matter? Yeah. Yeah. What are the facts? <laughs> like try and, uh, dismiss the editorialism and just accumulate what, what the facts of the matter are. Absolutely. And form my own opinion. Cause the truth is that, uh, almost, almost no matter what I read, um, uh, right, left, libertarian, all of it. I ag agree with the um, assessment on, on parts of it, and I disagree with some of it, too. Yeah. I mean, listen to that libertarian debate. You know, the idea, <laughs> this is one of those things that I guess once you start really getting into libertarianism, you find out, is that there are no two libertarians alike. Yeah. <laughs> we're, <laughs> they, we're, we're very much individuals. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there isn't a libertarian position on almost anything. About the only thing that you can get libertarians to agree on is that liberty should be a focus. Yeah. No, that's... That's about the extent of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying that looked the, good on the banner. Yeah. The the more specific you get about policy and philosophy, the less agreement that you have. Yeah. No, yep. no, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's part that, of what makes it fun. I'm just saying that'd be a good libertarian slogan. Let's focus on Liberty. Let's focus on Liberty. Liberty is the focus. Liberty is the focus. I like it. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Cause we're already over an hour. <laughs> so, um, I'm sp I'm supposed to do dentist again next week. Ooh, what day? Thursday. Ah, uh -huh. gotta quit scheduling it that way. <laughs> well, man. I mean, it's just take this podcast I, into I have, account whenever you schedule your dentist appointment. I have tried to reschedule actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they didn't have anything open. I I will get a call if something opens up. Okay, that's that's how that's gonna go. Here. But I, the plan that we had, I don't think is we're gonna follow through because I'm still having issues. And yeah. the plan was to make the um, the cap permanent. Yeah. But it still hurts to chew on that side. So I don't want that permanently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen from there, but, okay. uh, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll work it out there will be a podcast. Yeah. We'll have to figure out what day it's going to be though. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the challenge. Um, it'll either be Thursday or Friday. Probably. Kind of has to be. Kind of has to be. Kind of has to be. Okay. So, all right. Um, but we'll be back next week. Absolutely. And uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Uh, like and share. Um, comment. Uh, leave a review. Five stars only, of course. Absolutely. Only the best. <laughs> um, you can uh, email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. Um, if you have comments or questions or suggestions or whatever, and, uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.